Welcome back, and in this video, we will be covering different selection methods for 3D objects and tasks in your 4D model. So at the most basic level, if you click on an object in Synchro, it's selected, so it's highlighted in purple. If you click on it again, it's deselected. If you click on an object and then you click on another object, then both are selected. So that's something to keep in mind because you may, for example, later on click on these two windows and then forget that you've selected these and then maybe click on uh, this window over here to assign it to a task and by accident you would have assigned all three windows. So it's very important to use the escape button to deselect objects when you're not using them. And you can always look at the counter at the bottom. So if you point right here, it'll say this is the number of selected tasks slash resources slash 3D objects. We'll cover the difference between resources and 3D objects later on, but Notice that as you're clicking on more objects, the counter at the bottom increases. So keep looking at that counter from time to time to make sure you're not assigning objects that you don't want to assign to tasks uh, that are not relevant. Um, you can box select. And here where I'd like you guys to pause the video and try different selection directions and see how this is different in the model and we'll go over that right after you pause the video and try these out. Welcome back. So hopefully you've paused the video and tried out different selection methods. Now the most important one to remember is that if you start from the top right to the bottom left, it selects anything that touches the box even if it's uh, obstructed by another object. So you see, even at the bottom of my model, I've selected everything. However, if you try this direction instead, for example, from top uh, left to bottom right, it selects everything that touches the box. However, if it is hidden by another object, like these beams under that slab, they are not selected. And if you select, for example, from the bottom right to the top left, then it only selects objects that are obviously uh, completely inside of the box, so not that slab over here, and not obstructed by any other object. And if you use the final direction, then does the same thing as this one over here. Now, I don't remember all, I don't memorize all of them. The only one I memorize is this one, which selects everything, and also this one because it's a different color. And these are the two most important ones I use. And whenever I need to use a third, uh, another one, I'll just try them out on a small part of the model and then do them. So before you pause the video and practice this, I'll also put in a challenge. And that's what's the difference between using the shift key to create a box selection and using the control key to create a box selection. So pause the video now and try to figure out what the difference is. Welcome back. So hopefully you've figured out that the shift key is additive, meaning if I select a part of the model and then I select an overlapping other part of the model, the 3D objects keep getting added to my selection. However, the control button is subtractive. So I, if I select a part and then I select another part that overlaps, it flips it. So that's the only difference between the control key and the shift key. Let's cover some more uh, elements related to selecting objects. For example, if you want to select uh, many objects of the same type, you can usually, if nothing else is selected, click on one of the objects and then it'll snap to that object in the resources tree or in the 3D objects tree. We haven't covered the differences between resource and 3D objects yet. yet. We'll cover that later. And once it snaps to that object, you can click on that item and then use the same keyboard short key we used for tasks earlier, which is, which is using the shift and the left arrow key. And that will jump to the parent. And then you can select, if they're grouped in a way that makes sense, then you can take advantage of that method. If not, then you can take advantage of the other methods. So that's one method that's additional. In addition, you can use the properties of the model. For example, if I click on that window and I go to 3D properties, user fields, I can see, for example, the Revit uh, object ID or host ID. 
and I can right click select same value objects so I can right click select same value objects and it'll select everything that has the same host ID and in that case it's really helpful because they're not part of the same parent uh, the for example the roof the skylight roof so pause the video now and practice this Welcome back. So hopefully you've paused the video and practiced these newly learned methods. A final thing we're going to touch on is how to select objects based on their task assignment and tasks based on their resource assignment. So for example, I can click on a task and right click select assigned resources and it'll highlight everything that's assigned to that task. Now, if you don't see it, keep in mind that you may have the focus time, for example, all the way at the beginning of the schedule. So it hasn't been built yet. So if you advance the focus time through a schedule, then you can see that selection. Similarly, you can click on a resource and right click, select assign to tasks, and it'll select the tasks that resource is assigned to. And if it's more than one task, then you can use the indicator at the bottom to figure that out. Another method is these drop downs over here. So here it's just selecting the task. I can select tasks with assignment. And this way, whenever I click on a task, it automatically selects all of the resources assigned to that task. And keep in mind, this only works if the model is linked to the schedule. And you don't want that on all the time because sometimes it may lead to you making mistakes with your assignments. And similarly for the resource, you can switch it to tasks. So now as I select a resource, it automatically selects the relevant task and jumps to it. And then I'm going to take that back to the default, which is just the resource. And that's it for selection methods in this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.